Hello, I'm Clive Paget, and I'm Limelight's editor at large. I'm here to speak with Igor Levitt, who has been voted International Artist of the Year by our panel of critics. A thoughtful and exceptionally talented pianist, Igor has a string of acclaimed albums under his belt, but he's also a social activist whose interests go way beyond the music he plays. Igor, congratulations on winning our Critics' Choice for International Artist of the Year. Thanks a lot. It's a great, great honor. Uh, am, right am I right in thinking you've never been to Australia? Say again? Am I right in thinking you've never been to Australia? No. So are you surprised? I have or, only been to here, but I have never really been there, which is um, <laughs> definitely right up there on my list. Uh, and are you therefore surprised that you're so popular there? Yes. <laughs> you bet I am. I mean, apart from your brilliant series of, um, of recordings, um, the latest of which I think it's not published yet, but I think I can say that it's got another five star review for you. Um, audiences in Australia may well know you for your online presence, um, particularly during the pandemic. I mean, was that something you did to stay connected with audiences or was it uh, as much about maintaining your own sanity? Um, as, oh, it's, it, it, was, it was both. I mean, um, on the top, at the top of the list was really the connection to the people. Because um, to put it simply, I definitely would have not continued playing the piano during that time without knowing that there are people who I actually play for. This is, this is an integral part of who I am and why I make music is, is togetherness. Like I, it's it's just it's just you know boxing in in you know in into the air you know at, at some point you just get really tired you have no 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 counter punch you have nothing and you have no no counterplay and this is what what I essentially need when I make music is the, the the feeling of I do it for someone now um, of course it is it goes without saying that there's nothing more beautiful than actually seeing people in real and so experiencing this in real. But during the pandemic, this wasn't possible. So you know what? I was, I felt like, you know, let's just give it a try and see what, what it does. So I started streaming. And just knowing that there are people on the other side really lifted me up in such, a, such an incredible way. So, so at the top of the list was, was the connection. My sanity, yeah, my sanity would have been okay without it, but it was definitely much better with it. Uh, and, and what was it like returning to uh, to live performance? Um, it was special and beautiful and tender, and um, we all needed a little while. You know, you 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 could tell that the, the people. You know, it was it was really. It, I mean, the halls were kind of empty-ish, so it was not like it was packed. But there was a beautiful tenderness in all of it, in, in this whole experience. And, and it was really special. Um, but it wasn't just great. Because, we, because part of the story, which rarely is told, but I think it's very important, is that what was the physical and mental condition in which we all were, both the audiences and the musicians and everyone who makes a concert possible. So people backstage, um, assistants, managers, managements, um, promoters, etc. And the physical and mental state of mind was absolute exhaustion. We were all exhausted. It was not like we came back after three months of vacation. It was three months of, you know, being at the limit of you know, physics and your your, your mental state. And so um, it was both. It was beautiful mm. and difficult and overwhelming and um, unforgettable. You're probably best known or certainly best known in Australia for these kind of big projects on, on disc, um, like um, the variations by um, Bach um, coupled with 
variations by Beethoven and um, by Rzhuski, for example. I mean, is the scale of these uh, and the challenge of these projects, is that something that's important to you? Or is it just that the ideas you have demand a big canvas? It's kind of both. I like um, playing music, which takes a certain amount of time because it gives me time to, to, to express. It gives the audiences time to actually dive in. Um, and also when I, when I tackle a cycle, when I, when, I, when I discover a cycle which was written as a cycle and meant to be a cycle, I try to play it in fully. Of course, you could play just a selection of, let's say, the Shostakovich Periods and Fugues, which I just recorded, but, but then I'm like, why? It, it, you know, that, then it's not half as satisfying as actually experiencing the whole thing. And yes, it takes a long time to learn it, but then it's worth every, every penny of it, I mean, every inch of it, you know. And so, yeah, I tend to these longer, <laughs> um, rather, you know, um, big cycles. Um, and, and I tend to, to do that not only but I have a certain interest in that, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, your latest disc, as you just mentioned, um, couples the, the Shostakovich 24 Preludes and Fugues, which in itself, you know, I, 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 I think I've got the Tatiana Nikolaeva and it takes up yes. discs. Um, um, but you chose to couple it with um, Ronald Stevenson's quite rarely um, performed um, uh, Passacaglia on um, DSCH. Um, I mean, you could have just done the Shostakovich Preludes and Fugues. Why, why, why did you feel you needed to add the Stevenson? Because I thought that, A, I think that, this, that the Passacaglia is a once in a century experience mm -hmm. and one of the very greatest pieces of music ever been written for the piano solo. Mm -hmm. And and the context with this magnificent cycle by Dmitry Shostakovich, I thought, and I still think, provides the, the Pasakalia, the biggest and greatest possible plat platform to actually being elevated and, and to make people listen to it. So there is, um, there is both. There is a, most importantly, an almost limitless love and to, for, for this piece and for both of them. Mm -hmm. And there was also some tactics involved where I thought, how can I provide the best possible stage and platform for the Pasacalia? Because you're right, it is not only, I mean, you, you just said it is rarely performed. It is almost never performed. Mm -hmm. And uh, by a few, a, a few people have done it in the most wonderful way, but it's not like, it's not part of it. I mean, compared to the Pasacalia, mm -hmm. Frederick Chesky's People United is a mm -hmm. sort of uh, core repertoire of piano piece. <laughs> And there is no other reason for this ignorance than ignorance. Mm 